Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. Today we're going to take a look at the very simple progressions for the one-handed backhand. You can use these progressions when you teach a beginner or when you're correcting a stroke. Because we don't really want to teach a tennis beginner a very complex, advanced version of the one-handed backhand. They will just get lost in too much complexity. And also if you're correcting someone that has troubles on the backhand, we need to give them a very simple mental image first that they see the back end as very, very simple. And then on top of that, we can build more complexity and more advanced movements. So here we go, step one. You will hold the racket like this, extended with your non-dominant arm. And you just put your hitting arm on top of the racket in a very comfortable way. So that way you're gonna find the back end grip the one-handed back and grip very naturally. You don't think, have to think about the bevels or where to put the V or something like that. It just naturally sits correctly on the racket, so on top. So if I show you from this angle, I have to hold the racket here. I just stand with my feet like this and I hold the racket like this. I come with my hand comfortably on top. You see, if I were to come more inside, it's uncomfortable. If I come here, it's uncomfortable, so I come in a very comfortable way. I must not hold the racket here because if I come comfortably to the handle, it's the wrong grip. This is the comfortable grip here, not this one. So you must hold the racket far away from you, like extended. And then you come here very comfortably and that is your back end grip. You can later adjust by a degree or two or a millimeter or two. But this is your foundation, so that's the step one. So you start here, step one, complete. After step one, we do step two. So step two is just turn to the side with your body. So don't do anything with your arms. You're here. So if I'm expecting the ball from there, my head is still there. And I just turn. So that's step two. In step two, your weight will naturally shift to this leg. But I don't want you to step yet. To the other side just stay here don't step yet so that is step two completed so for step three we can call it step three and a half is because we have we're gonna have to connect stepping forward and hitting the back end so it's not good to step forward and wait because your stroke is going to lose uh, the dynamic weight transfer it's gonna become too mechanical too stiff so that's why we wait in this position and you have to learn when the ball will be thrown, you have to learn to time your step. So later on that becomes very important because there are many different incoming balls and you have to learn, sometimes you have to wait on this leg with your weight, you wait and then you time your step and weight transfer and hit. So now we're here, so what we're going to do for step three and a half is just we're going to step and finish like this. So your checkpoint is that your arm is extended, the racket is vertical and that the arms are in a line. So not like this, like in a V, but that you see this line like this. So from here, step three and a half would be like this. So now with the ball, here's step one, step two. So now I wait for the ball. And then I connect, step and hit. One more. So here's the whole sequence from the front view. You can see step one, just extend the racket. This is the natural way to find the one-handed back and grip. Step two, I just rotate. When I rotate, my weight will naturally shift to this leg so don't rotate like this and keep the weight on both feet right it will naturally shift the hips will turn the pelvis will turn the heel comes up when you do this right so just make sure that you're comfortable because I have seen people also do like this and being very uncomfortable keeping the foot on the ground right so when you rotate the weight comes on this leg and now I wait for the ball so you give a sign okay give me the ball and then you have to time your step. So, as I mentioned, it's not good to wait like this. 
because uh, also the player does not feel coiling, they don't develop timing and they don't feel coiling. Because once they're like this, their hips and shoulders are in the same alignment, they don't feel any energy build up in the body, then they don't know how to release it. So when we go like this, we start to feel something here in the pelvis, in the hips region, we feel some tension, slight tension through the core. So now we, we have stored some energy and we know from where to release it. So when we are ready, we wait for the, our coach or friend to throw us the ball and then we have to time, we have to time the step. Okay, one more. We time the step and we finish. And we control our finish when we're learning techniques. So don't just hit and let go. Right now you're working on simple techniques. So your basic guideline is racket, vertical, arm extended and both arms in an upright line. So in conclusion, this is a very simple method for teaching one-handed backhands to beginners or sometimes when you're correcting stroke, you have a very simple mental image for the player. They don't complicate the stroke. So if I show you from here, so once they're here and if this is functioning well, then later on you can add a bit of lifting of the racket head. The drop will become also more natural. You can picture topspin and so on. So first we start with a simple base and then on that you can then build more advanced one-handed backhand techniques. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.